Hello and welcome to the Wheel of Crime podcast. This podcast is ran by two ladies who play games, mumble profanities, and laugh way too often. Also, this podcast does cover topics of sensitive nature, and as such, listener discretion is advised. Hello, 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 and uh, welcome again to another episode of the wheel of crime podcast my name is jen my name is emily and yes welcome back if i'm sounding a little coffee and uh, coughing and congested and rough around the edges it's because i've been very sick the last little while and just got my voice back so have patience with me please i know i can't believe the summer is like halfway over at this point i know it's been what a whole month of summer and it's already almost over (laughs) (laughs) i love it it's great Uh, what have you been up to jen uh we took our little puppy dewey swimming for the first time yesterday or yeah he hated it (laughs) but he looked so cute oh was he a little stinky afterwards like wet dogs um we gave him a bath like because we went to one of the lakes near our hometown and it was like it wasn't too bad like he was literally in there for maybe five minutes and then he wanted the fuck out of there so it wasn't so bad and then we like went home and well not our home but to our parents Mm -hmm. home and gave him a bath if it's the lake i'm thinking of i would also not want to be in there for any longer than five minutes so he's got a he's got a good (laughs) mindset you know what he's pretty smart um i wish i had some cool and interesting to talk about because you do you recently ish um went to our high school oh yeah (laughs) i've just been thinking about how sick i've been the last week and how i learned that the amazon man can deliver to my house in the country so that's been awesome amazing i know it's been so great i needed so many things and i didn't even have to leave my house to get them so that was cool um incredible right and then yeah i went to the high school reunion um lots of people i knew there also lots of people i didn't which was interesting uh, nothing too crazy, mm-hmm. though. Nobody hooked up in the bathroom or confessed their undying love or had a fist fight in the middle of the bar. Damn. Yeah, no, nothing nothing like I was wishing Honestly, for. Honestly, but... disappointing. I feel like I wish the people who went to school with us were more interesting. I wish. <laughs> I, it would have been cool if people were a little more dramatic like that. Like, like I've been in right? love with like, you for I the wish last there was a fight. twelve years. Kiss me now, and she's like, "No, I'm married, and this is my husband." And it turns out to be his high school best friend mm-hmm. or something, and then they got a fist fight about it. That would have been awesome. And the ch- and her child is secretly his. Yeah, like no, I wish, Ugh. I wish so bad, but no, nothing like that. Um, See, I should have gone and like had that and like just pretended, like hired some actors, yeah. you know, like. Well, two people well, yeah well there was enough people there where i had no idea who they were so uh, it could have very well well been you could have hired in two actors to pretend they went to high school with us and i'm sure people would have believed it i i don't know emily was giving me the rundown of it before we started this episode we genuinely talked for an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> yes yes giving the tea providing some tea um but yeah no, nothing i don't know like i said i wish there was more something more crazy from the day of because that would have been fun to talk about but it was just a bunch yeah. of people you know 10 years have passed some people are the same some people aren't people are just doing peopley things nobody looks some people look different some people don't like ah. Do you think that I look different than I did in high school or do you think I look the same? I think I would say similar. Like when I look at you, I'm like, hey, there's clearly these things that have changed about you in your appearance. But like, I think. Such as? (laughs) Such as? Well, you went through like five different hairstyles when we were in school. I feel like if we pulled up the yearbook (laughs) and one of them, you would have been bleach blonde and another one, you would have had fringe and another one of them, you would have been doing blue eyeshadow, I think, at some point. Like, those types of things. But, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But it's not like you've had plastic surgery or anything. So that's why I say similar but different. Yeah, that's fair. Right? That's fair. I feel like most people look probably, like, at least, like, a, a little similar, you know? Yeah. I feel like most people don't change 
that drastically Honestly, after they leave high school. if they didn't look exactly the same as how I remember them, the only other difference would be some people gained a little bit of weight and some people are now bald or balding. Like, that would be the only difference. Oh, is the person whom I do not like who was there balding? Yes. Thank God. <laughs> I should have told you that Thank earlier. God. Something to humble that person. Well, see, here's the thing. The person that Jen does not like, I do not like either. So I was just trying to avoid eye contact at all. But I did notice that they are balding. <laughs> so so there, there was one good thing that came out of this reunion. You know, I hope he's doing terrible. I, I wouldn't know. I don't have him on anything. <laughs> and I saw him <laughs> only from a distance that night. So... Good. Yep, keep it keeping it cool cash uh yeah and then besides that i don't know like just this last week while i've been sick i've noticed because i live by a lake around our hometown right and i've noticed a lot of people do mm-hmm. outdoor lake stuff which has made me jealous because yep. i wish that was me instead of being inside of my house feeling like shit all week because i've had a yeah. very bad sinus head illness of some kind like oh no well here's the weird thing it started with a like slightly itchy throat so i was pretty sure that i had strep and i went into the doctor and i was like okay because if it's strep like i used to get strep really badly when i had my tonsils so i just always have it in my head like if i think i have strep get medicated because otherwise it takes like a month to get better right so i went in right doctor also thought i had strep but they like did like a swab test and everything he's like hey you know if this is like a typical thing like take this medication whatever it's all good um went home they called me negative test for strep and i was like okay so then what is this then all of a sudden a couple days later intense intense pain inside of my head like i could still breathe fine my throat was still a little itchy but it was just like it felt like my brain was swollen and pressing on my ears so like yeah so i was like super sensitive to sound crazy crazy migraines like headaches all day long for like two days and then it immediately went into stuffy ears ear pain head still hurt coughing constantly can't breathe can't sleep at night and it's been like that for like five days and i just now got my voice back awesome yeah oh and i lost my voice the second day of what i thought was strep my voice left the building couldn't make phone calls at all for work or anything so i was just there feeling like shit not being able to talk so it's been lovely i've been having a really great quiet week of doing nothing and now i'm here awesome <laughs> love that for you yeah so great um but yeah well i mean if there's nothing else super cool that's coming to mind that you want to talk about let's get into our wheel of questions yes spin away em uh-oh my head my other headphones just about flew away we'll call that good the wheel's not wheeling today uh number <laughs> four if you were an artist, what kind of artist would you be? Well, I am an artist. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I would be a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Ooh la la. Does that count as an artist? Or is that more of just like a career? Is that art? A film is art, okay. <laughs> I guess. I was always thinking like pottery <laughs> or watercolor. <laughs> I would I think my second option would be a potter I have like I really want to get into pottery I've been getting like a little into air dry clay for like the Mm -hmm, past mm -hmm. few months but I would love to get my own like kiln and like fire up some pottery and make some plates or something I feel that also I think I think we really need to just like get your fingers in there make some cool stuff paint it yeah uh, it does speak to me too I think that'd be fun um or, like, if I had the patience and the tools and the time to do this, like, making jewelry would be kind of cool. That would be cool. I've also considered that, but I don't think I really have the skill. And it seems like there's a lot of upfront investment in the tools. Mm-hmm. And I don't need any more expensive hobbies. I've got enough. I've hit my cap. Relatable. Also, I always look at, like, people's stuff that they make on, like, Etsy and stuff, and I'm like, I could never do that. Like, it just feels so, like, <laughs> so professional. Yeah. Like, right. Like, you need skills. You need legitimate skills. Yeah, whereas, like, any time in the past I've ever, like, attempted to make, like, like, a funsy, like, necklace or something, I feel like it just always, it always looks homemade. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like oh, a kid's no. craft project. And I'm like, eh. 
maybe not maybe not yeah, my calling i don't know like we me and my husband took a, like a ring making class or whatever earlier this year because he really wanted to yep. do it Emily already knows that she was there. I was there. I know everything. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, there's actually, like, math involved in, like, measuring shit. And that is not my calling. Fuck that. Absolutely not. They're like, okay, measure. And I'm, like, sitting there struggling, like, oh, my God. I don't want to do this right now. Set me free. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm like, John, can you measure mine for me? John, you're a man and you do math. Can you math this for me? (laughs) I mean, I do math every day for my job, but like, also, still, also same, but we don't talk about that. That's not related. Yeah, not on my free time. No, no. that's a no math zone. If, if you're doing something that's fun, math should not be involved. That is work no, only. absolutely not. Absolutely not. Gosh, um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else kind of artsy I was thinking about that I would do, but those are really the only two things. Like, I've tried painting or drawing in the past, but I just don't really have the the inclination, I think. Yeah. You know? I feel like you were really good at drawing in, like, in high school and middle school. Like, I haven't seen you draw since then, but I remember you being good at drawing. I like, hilariously enough show you this on camera i like made an attempt like two months ago at drawing oh that's not bad that's pretty good that's about as far as i got though because i was like man it's it's just tedious now like i feel like when we were in school and stuff because it was like a class thing and i was like oh i have like an hour where i can just like fadoodle and do these things like it was more fun to me Whereas, like, now, at the end of the day, yeah. I'm not thinking about, like, drawing. I'm usually just thinking about eating copious amounts of linguine and going to bed. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> or, like, if I'm doing anything fun, I'm, like, trying to read my book or trying to play a video game. Like, just, it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't come to me as naturally as I think it used to. That's fair. I feel like it really is hard to carve out time for hobbies. When you work a full-time you know? job, where it's like 40 to 50 mm-hmm. hours a week, a hundred percent. I know. And I feel like I, me and you, usually work closer to like 60, 70 hours oh, a week. Oh, usually, yeah. And then forget when you have off time and you're like, wow, I'm finally free from work. I need groceries and to go to the dentist and do these other 50,000 things that aren't really fun, but I have to. So, and then all of a sudden you're like... I finally booked a dentist appointment and I'm like, wow, I'm doing so good for myself right now. I had like a real talk conversation with my husband the other day because like I've been trying to fit in a lot of like this type of stuff on the weekend. Like grocery, sure, but like appointment type stuff doesn't always work because a lot of places are only open on weekdays. And I was like... Mm -hmm. real talk honey like i know i work these hours like monday to friday but i will occasionally have to leave in the middle of a work day to do this because i apparently have no choice yeah and that's just how it is it just be what it be all right let's spin for our next question that was a little better okay um what do you think of when somebody mentions boston the Boston Marathon and the bombing that happened. That's interesting. I don't think that at all, actually. When somebody mentions Boston, I think of... <laughs> what do you think, I think of? I think of Boston cream donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and I think of the accent and being like, oh, you're from Boston or something. I do not think of the marathon or the bombings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was... A pretty horrific thing that happened. Uh, yeah, I just don't think about it. I'm like, man, Boston. Those Boston people are kind of silly. Hey, but what a tasty donut. I mean, that is like peak difference <laughs> between how our brains work. It's literally, <laughs> it's like mom, like my mom when we were kids used to always be like, I always wonder how you and Jen's relationship works out because you guys are similar, yes, but also wildly different in a lot of ways <laughs> you're like man those bombings were terrible and i'm like oh man what a tasty tasty donut i haven't eaten one of those in a while i mean we do share a brain cell but when it's with me and when it's with you it's thinking two yeah, those, different those things are two different it's working people. two 
It's a double life that it has going on. And it just meets in the middle sometimes and splits off in half. And we're like, wow, what's going yeah. on now? Crazy. Oh, man. All right, let's spin for our next question. Let's spin away. If you had a neighbor, like one of your neighbors at your apartment, come up to you and tell you that there's a strange animal hanging around outside of your house, what would you do? Like, what if they were like, hey, we've seen this thing outside. We don't know what it is, but it's been hanging around your house specifically. Like, what would you even do? Hmm. Okay. Well, for context for the viewers, I live currently in the part of us in the part of a bigger city, Calgary, <laughs> that is like desolate. There's nothing Desolate. happening here. I was forced to move here. Yeah, post-apocalyptic. Like, it's not my first choice. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're struggling over here, okay? They had a picture out front of, like, a great neighborhood, and the highlight was the save on foods, okay? Like, that's what we're working with funny. here. Yeah. You know? Um. So, the people that live in this building are primarily seniors, and most of them have lost their marbles. <laughs> so, I think I would assume... It was like a dog or like a cat yeah. or something regular. And I'm just like, yeah, they're just, they're a little, they're, they're gone. It's that dementia. They've they forgot left. what a dog is. Oops. <laughs> 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 it's fine. Oh man. I'm going to be okay. It's probably my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just see Dewey outside and they're like, there's a strange animal outside. And you're like, yes keeps barking it, at me and i'm like yeah that's just what he that's, does that's him that's what he that's him we love him he's great <laughs> that's dewey you're describing my dog right now <laughs> and they're like i know what a dog is and you're like uh-huh yes good talk yeah. <laughs> i'm not worried about it please never speak to me again okay bye. <laughs> please go back to your own home um see for my house i would be significantly concerned if one of my neighbors told me there was a strange animal outside because living in the country well you live in the country i'm like all of my neighbors know what most animals are and what they look like because they see them all the time if one of my neighbors is going out of their way to talk to me and be like yeah there's something strange i don't know what it is but it's outside of your house i don't know if i would ever leave ever again I would be, I would have pest control on speed dial. And I'd be like, you bitches better get over here because I live in the country and people are telling me there's some fucking weird outside and it's your job to figure out what it is. I feel like you would pack up your cats and your Andrew, put them all in the car and fucking hit the yeah, road. Yeah, I'd be like, great. There's some cryptid living outside of my house specifically. I gotta go, man. <laughs> like, I am not dealing with this bullshit. <laughs> also this is kind of a sidetrack but i've been meaning to tell you i was telling speaking of weird things outside of your home emily thinks she saw am i allowed to say it yeah because i think we've talked about on the podcast before i saw something that looked like a deer but was 100 percent not a deer when i was living at my old place and it was the probably one of the creepiest waking experiences i have ever had in my entire life Right. So, but she thinks it's a specific cryptid. Yeah, it's called a not deer is this cryptid, which I only found out after I saw this thing, by the way. So that makes it extra creepy. I thought it was what Emily calls a Wendy boy is what she thought it was. Uh, Yeah, I thought it was either that, like a Wendy boy, which is what I thought at the time, or a not deer, which I found out about afterwards. Because just for context here, I was driving home from work. It was like sunset, but like in the summertime. So it was pretty late for where we live. So like at around 10 or something. But I was driving home and my old place was an apartment at the literal edge of the city. So it was like half countryside, half like business buildings that would have been closed by this time. And I saw something in the road that looked like a deer, but its body was very long. And I couldn't really see because it was dark enough that my headlights hadn't turned on to like nighttime mode yet. And when it ran away mm-hmm. from me, it was stinking fast and it ran specifically in a zigzag shape. And its eyes reflected yellow at me and stuff like that. There was just a few things where I was like, okay, looks like a deer is not acting like a deer. This is fucking creepy, especially because where Jen and I come from, there is a lot, a lot of deer in the area. So you know what those boys look like. And I'm not totally sure what I saw was a deer. Right. So I was telling my, we, me and my parents were talking about cryptids yep. uh, because my little, 
second cousin or whatever, he believes in the goat man. It's like going around the kindergartens or something. And he's like af- deathly afraid of the goat man. And I was like, oh, yeah, Emily thought that she maybe saw a uh, Wendy boy, mm-hmm. which is like a skinwalker yeah. or whatever. But I said the like official name, which Emily does yeah, not we don't want me say to say. That. So I won't also, say especially now because I live in the country. If you dare even open your mouth and say what it's actually called, I'm ending this call. <laughs> I will not speak to you. Because, yeah, it's like this whole thing where you're not supposed to say it at all. You're specifically not supposed to say it outside or anywhere near the countryside. There's all these rules and stuff. And I'm like, hey, I'm not suspicious, but I'm a little suspicious. You know? Well, I I said the real name to my parents. And literally, I kid you not, the brightest strike of lightning lit up the entire living room because this was at like 11 30 p.m oh, sweet and the hugest crack of thunder it like rattled the house and i was like oh i'm a little scared <laughs> it's because you fucking said it literally they say you're not supposed to say it at all and especially not outside anywhere or anywhere close to outside <laughs> Yeah, we were well, like especially not where we in... live because we literally live in the area where they are supposed to be is the other thing too. So that's like another dock off you and your behavior. Well, I I was like I need to tell her this because she's going to be fucking scared for me. See, that's what I mean. This is the same reason why we don't ever aren't ever and don't ever are going to use a Luigi board. I'm not going to do it. There's certain things you don't <laughs> do and this is one of them. Well, the more you the know. More you know um yeah that's really creepy though that's see that's the universe telling you to shut your mouth and quit saying the actual (laughs) word for it windy boy is fine everybody knows what you're talking about i assume uh and if you don't well too damn bad too damn bad uh all right let's spin for our next question um if you had a zoo Full of cryptids, what would be like your headliner cryptid? Like the one that you think people would want to come and see the most? Oh, for sure, the Mothman. See, I thought the Mothman too, but the Mothman I've noticed is more like US specific. So then I was thinking, what would. Or like, like Bigfoot. But like, what if you were trying to attract people from like other countries too, though, to be like, hey, fly to Calgary and come see my cryptid zoo? We have the blank. I would say the Loch Ness Monster because I'd be like, hey, we live in Canada. We shouldn't have that anyways. Number one. Number two, how did we catch it? You know? And number three, where are we keeping it? And also, how are you going to see it? Like, I feel like the Loch Ness Monster would get you people from everywhere. That's fair. I feel like the Mothman's just kind of, like, cool. Like, you know, he's like... I'm cool. Yeah, he would be pretty cool, too. I'm, I'm still going to stick with the Loch Ness Monster, just because I put thought into it, and I think it would be really cool to see. Fair. You know what? I love that for you. Thank you. I can't wait till you open your Loch Ness, Loch Ness Monster and Zoo. I can't wait until you open the Mothman Zoo. We'll be right beside each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe we should just open one facility together. Yeah, we'll just share the same building. Save on cost. Yeah, it'll be perfect. <laughs> um, all right, so... <laughs> Can you take a guess what my story for you here today is? It's some sort of cryptid in Boston. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I just scrolled through the description quickly to see how on point you were. And yeah. Um, So I'm going to read this description for you. This description says the Dover Demon is a creature reportedly sighted on April 21st to 22nd of 1977 in Dover, Massachusetts, a town which is about 15 miles or 24 kilometers southwest of downtown Boston, which explains Boston. Uh, while or sorry, while explanations have been proposed, the sightings remain unsolved. <gasps> That's spooky. So spooky. Why? Okay, so I am going to get into it. Uh, Well, I guess first, do you know anything of the Dover Demon? No. Okay. I knew of it. I did not know the story of it, if that makes sense. I know neither. So um, take it away, Em. All right. So in April of 1977, about 15 miles south of Boston, a very strange thing appeared at the at night that put the town of dover on the map in the world of cryptozoology the study in search of legendary creatures 
So mu- multiple teen drivers reported seeing an unidentifiable, di- unidentifiable, you can hear my cold coming through a little bit, um, alien-like creature with glowing eyes over the course of two days, specifically. As word of these sightings spread, so did the legend of the Dover Demon. Um, there, So I'm just going to preface with I'm taking a lot of like quotes specifically from another podcast that covered this because they did an interview with somebody from Dover who was a part of the group of people who originally cited the Dover Demon. So today, okay. today we are a podcast that covers another podcast just because they did ask a lot of really... How very meta of us. It's very meta. <laughs> but I also um, wanted to give credit where credit is due because they did do the research and reach out to this person. But I also didn't want to just give you like the story of the collective. I kind of liked being able to give the insight of another person as well as some of the questions the show host asks. So just, if it sounds a little funky, that's why. Amazing. So we'll take it away. Um, uh, GBH is All Things Considered host, which that's the name of the podcast. Um, the host is named Arun Rath, and he spoke about the Dover Demon with Jeff Bell- Bellinger, a folklore expert and host of the New England Legends podcast. So, Aaron Ruth says, There's no better person to talk to about the Dover Demon than you because you know the story so well. I first read about it in your book, Weird Massachusetts, and you spoke to the first eyewitness, right? Jeff Bellinger, uh, who's the folklorist who wrote this book and is also the person who talked to the person who (laughs) was one of the people who cited this. Like I said, we're getting all kinds of meta in here today. Or as you said, either way. Just stick with me, okay? Jeff Ballinger says, I did. I got to interview Bill Barlett about the experience, and he, to me, is key as to why this case is so compelling. Bill is a fine arts painter, and I encourage you to Google him. His work is incredible. He's a painter, and it looks almost photographic. He's got quite a bit of skill. His work has been shown in galleries all over. He's won awards, and so on, which is highly relevant to the story, because on April 21st, 1977, when he was driving down Farm Street in Dover, so this artist was the person he was driving, um, he saw something perched on a rock. He said he was going about 40 miles an hour. He had friends with him in the car and it was spring break. They were looking for a party or something to do. All he sees is this creature with glowing eyes, like the way an animal's eyes would reflect in your headlights. It's like nothing he'd ever seen before and it startled him. He said something to his friends, but his friends didn't see it. And he literally turned around to go get another look at the creature, but it was gone. And the reason his fine arts painting life is so relevant is because after this, he went home and drew what he saw. And like many artists, he understands perspective and size and so on. He didn't have a camera back then, unfortunately, but he did have his eyes and his ability to be able to draw exactly what he saw as how he saw it. So... That may be the end of the story, except a few hours later, a kid named John Baxter, who was 15 years old at the time, was leaving his girlfriend's house around midnight, about one mile away on Miller Hill Road, and he saw the creature as well. At first, he thought it was a neighborhood kid sneaking around at night, but when he got a little closer, he saw this strange, bulbous head, these long, spindly arms and fingers, and then it just scurried off into the woods, which... I just got to make a side note here. Me, if I was a kid and I saw what I thought was another kid and I was about to go give this kid my two cents and I instead saw something with a huge bulbous head and spindly arms skitter away to the woods, I would not be able to sleep for probably the next week. That would haunt, well, listen, if I saw haunt me. If I saw anything skitter away, I'm, I'm jumping off a here's bridge. Here's the thing. Something vaguely childlike that skitters away. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. you didn't just see not a kid. You saw something that you thought was a kid that has now scurried away into the woods. Like, I would not be able to sleep for maybe a month after that. Like, it would haunt Scurrying, me. Scurrying is the scariest method of transportation. <laughs> <laughs> Scurrying is the scariest method of transportation. <laughs> I want that on a shirt. That is so good. I love that. Um, <laughs> but also, you're right. Like, of all the ways you could leave and you choose to scurry, like, at this point, you're on <laughs> like, purpose. I'm afraid. Like, that is the I'm st- fucking scared. So scary. Um, so then, <laughs> so once he saw this, 
thing scurry horrendously into the woods. He goes <laughs> home and he also drew up what he saw. And then the following night, oh, awesome. I know, right? All these kids are like, man, this was so fucking scary. I have to draw it immediately, which good for them. Honestly, <laughs> like, I'm an artist. I got a bunch of I gotta draw. On the loose here. Draw, drawing this demon. I yearn to draw. No, they didn't yearn for the mines. They were too old for the mines. They yearn for art now. Exactly. So then the following night, a girl named Abby Bra- 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 Brabham, Brabham, I think, who was also 15 at the time, went out driving with her boyfriend and she saw a creature like just at first they described what they thought was like a naked little kid, but then realized Ew. that it was definitely not a naked little kid and it was like nothing they had seen before. Oh, right? that's icky. I hate icky. it. I hate it. So. You're talking about a 26-hour period over the span of two days in April of 1977, but it was documented and rattled every single person who saw it. And enough people believed them, it eventually made the radar of a person named Lauren Coleman, who is a cryptozoologist and author, who put the story in his book Mysterious America. And from there, the Dover Demon, like this naked, icky, not human child in the woods, has kind of taken on its own life, so to say. So... Mm -hmm. Wrath then asks at this point, is this why it's considered one of the most interesting cases for people who study this stuff seriously? You have three independent accounts of this thing that are way more compelling than just one person seeing something weird. Because also, just outside of what Wrath just said, um, all of these stories corroborate. These are three people who were not friends with each other, all about the same age, who were out that night within the, the same two nights, and all of their drawings and how they describe it match up it's all the same well that's suspicious is that not suspicious but they don't know each other like they are not friends with each other like i think like two of the kids didn't even go to school with each other like it just from them telling their families and their families talking to their neighbors and their neighbors talking to other people we're able to figure out no like they all saw the same thing for sure Eww. whatever that thing is i don't like we that. don't fucking know you know <laughs> they all saw something scary and now i'm afraid exactly so um, Belanger, or Bellinger, then says, right, and then also, I think Bill Barlett being able to draw it, and then John Baxter drawing it as well, if you put the two drawings next to each other, it's clearly the same thing, even with, like, um, them, because one of them is, like, an artist artist, and the other one's just a guy, so even then. So even with the difference in skill, you can tell that there's similarities. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly it. So you can. <laughs> so yeah, they're still similar things, even with the difference in skill. Um, <laughs> and it's clearly the same thing, whatever that thing is. And we can debate about that, but nobody's ever identified exactly what it is. It was Lauren Coleman, who was the cryptozoologist that this kind of was first officially brought up to, who decided to call Wait. it. Wait. Wait, she's a cryptozoologist? Yeah, it's is that what you just said? <laughs> so Laura Coleman is a cryptozoologist, which is like a zoologist cryptid. That's a real It's This is a real job? thing. Yeah, that is a real thing. <laughs> and um, not just... Do you go to the University of Cryptids? Or like, where do you get a degree for that? You know what? I've never thought about it. Truthfully, there has to be a degree of some kind or like a program that they take. Is it like next, like, is it rude to ask if it's next to the clown college or like? Well, clown college is real too, so it might be. I know. <laughs> I don't know. Because Belanger is also a cryptozoologist. I, oh, it's a real thing. Wow. Well, you did say you wanted to go back to school. Maybe this will be your next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's insane. Uh, okay. Here we are, folks. Cryptozoologist. That is something you can go to school for. Apparently. There you go. Um, so, yes. Uh, Laura Coleman, who's a cryptozoologist, called it the Dover Demon because Dover kind of went with demon, which is hilarious. I love... So, I'm not sure if Lauren is a man or a woman because I know some people are named both of these things. Um but I love that the idea behind this is, oh, it happened in Dover and demon just kind of matched. So that's why. Not because it's actually doing anything demonic. It just kind of went along with Dover. Okay, I looked it up. So cryptozoology is the study of animals that have been rumored not proven to exist. 
These are called cryptids, obviously. There's no qualification or certification to become a cryptozoologist, but it's a field filled with passionate and enthusiastic experts. So it's like not an official, you can't, it's not like clown college. You can't actually go there. You just kind of have to like. Do you just become one then? Like if you research enough, yeah. you just evolve into a cryptozoologist? Yeah, so I think you're, like, you're on the path, Emily. I feel like you could call yourself, like, a a novice cryptozoologist. Ooh, should I update my Instagram? Cryptozoologist? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, you should. That'd be so funny. Um, I feel like I would not be uh, well-liked in the field, though, because they would be like, mm, you're a podcaster who talks about cryptids, and now you're calling yourself a cryptozoologist? Where's your credentials, bitch? What books have you written? <laughs> Did you name the Dover yeah. Demon? I don't think so. I mean, listen, there is no credentials needed. So I feel like you're qualified. <laughs> listen, I'll, I'll, con- it, I'll, con- it, I'll consider it. I'll, I'll put my two cents into it. <laughs> you know what? I think it's something to add to your list of things to explore. If uh, your current job doesn't work out. I I'm a cryptozoologist. <gasps> you should. I would love that oh for God, you. So um, but yes, so. Add it to your LinkedIn. In case you were curious, there is nothing demonic about the Dover demon, okay? Yeah, no demons. Satan ain't here today. No, Satan is not here today. Just something that looks like a child and is not a child that was that runs its spindly legs into the woods while it scurries away. But you know what? That does scream demon to me. It feels, it gives me the essence of demonic energy, you know? Like, it might not be a demon. Yeah. And it might not do any strictly demon things, but it gives me demonic vibes. Yeah, like, for sure. I would be very afraid. Right? Um. So then, so there is no, so other cryptozoologists have weighed into this, though, I guess. And they're like, it doesn't make sense because there is nothing demonic about it. Or otherworldly. We just don't know what it is and we still talk about it. Which I thought was kind of funny. So here's the thing. The general consensus that cryptozoologists, the collective of cryptozoologists, have weighed in on this. Is that the Dover Demon is not demonic. It. We don't know why we're still calling it the Dover Demon. If anything, they think it might be alien in origin. Mm. Well... As a professional cryptozoologist <laughs> yourself, what do you think, Emily? See, what I thought was interesting about this is that it reminds me a lot of that episode I did of the Melon Head Kids. Because they're described mm, the same way yeah. for having big heads and spindly arms and all these things. But... oh, so maybe it's just, like, someone who's just, like, not the cutest. See, that was my thing! I was like, so it's either one of these things where somebody saw... A person with disability, like the case of the melon heads, and it just evolved into something else. Or it's a runaway melon head, and <laughs> it's just a melon head that wanted to move to Boston. Oh, Right? He's like, I'm just trying to make friends. Listen, melon heads have rights, mad too. They are allowed to live in Boston. They don't have to live in the woods. There's woods in Boston. See, there's trees probably. there. Probably. Never been, I assume. I think so. I yeah, know they have donuts. If they have donuts, they gotta have trees, so. There's gotta be at least one tree in Boston. At least one, for sure. Or I'm banking on that. Yeah, probably in the zoo, I feel like. It might be a fake tree, but I think that still counts. Is there a zoo there? Probably. I, mean, I assume so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, i'm guessing like i said never most been. big cities have zoos Watch every american listener we have is gonna mail in and be like you stupid canadian fucks <laughs> you couldn't google <laughs> shut up boston zoo <laughs> anyways um <laughs> there are trees in boston probably that's neither here nor there though um so that's like what i said how the zoologists have weighed in so um what belange says uh, is what's really interesting to me too is that you would expect more copycat sightings but f- to this day there hasn't been any outside of these two days that they saw this cryptid nobody else has seen this thing hmm. and this was such a small event in such a small town that one day really a day and a couple of hours you would have expected other people to have copycat events so like other people in town to have heard it and been like oh my gosh i think i saw that too um 
But there's been nothing over the last 50 years of this story being told. Weird. Right? So it was kind of like a one-off thing. Yeah, a one-off, those two days, those three people, and it has not been seen since. Maybe they were abducted by aliens. Maybe. Right? So then Rath asks, how does this creature compare to other sightings? Belanger says, so you could contrast it with, say, Bigfoot. And when I say Bigfoot, whether or not you believe in Bigfoot, I don't have to describe him to you. You have an image in your head of a big, hairy creature that looks like a monkey and walks in the woods and so on. That creature is spotted all over the world and with various names depending on the locality. But the Dover Demon is unique in that it doesn't really match any descriptions of any other cryptid from anywhere else. Which is not true because I just told you about the melon heads. Maybe I am a cryptozoologist. (laughs) Yeah, you're smarter than everyone. <laughs> I knew it. Um, <laughs> but yes, so just saying to me, this does feel very melon head ish. But this cryptozoologist said that it doesn't match anything, which is fine, I guess. Um, and not only that. That's his opinion. He's allowed to be wrong. He's allowed to be wrong. I'm allowed to be wrong. We're all allowed to be wrong, but <laughs> I'm also allowed to be right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but Emily's always right. Always. <laughs> it's true. Um. I'm totally losing where I am in my notes. <laughs> uh, so, oh, yes. So not only that, the town of Dover has sort of come to identify itself with this creature. So um, Belanger says that he used to own a T-shirt from the Dover Historical Society. And it's just a cartoon version of Bill Barlett's drawing. And it just says the Dover Demon, do you believe? And is still sold by the Historical Society, which is neat. Uh, so then Rat. I feel like you need to get one. Yeah, we should, right? um look into it i bet you it's super if it's a high schooler's drawing from the 70s i don't have high hopes that it's that high of quality but as i was saying rath says getting back to bill barlett how does he say that this affected his life what was the reaction of the time and how stay with him Belanger says, I was lucky to get an interview with him because we had a friend in common. He's given this interview so many times over the years. And imagine if you're a really accomplished fine arts painter that the work of yours that's the most famous was drawn on a piece of notebook paper when you were 17 in high school. And it's been run in various newspapers and so on. It makes him a little nuts to keep reliving the story. However, his story hasn't wavered over the years. He tells him when he's in the mood to tell it to somebody, which is fair. And he's had no strange sighting since. Although he did say a year later he was parking with his girlfriend when he heard a thump on the car and he saw this blur of a creature go by. Couldn't quite make it out, but for him he sort of connected it maybe to the same thing that he saw. And it was about a year after the first sighting in 1977, but that was about it. So the guy, Bill Bartlett, who drew the Dover Demon, thought he saw it a year later, couldn't really see it, but since then hasn't seen it again. But Hmm. he's kind of bitter because he's still an artist right like he's a fine art arts artist now and the only thing of yeah that's his like most published work is like a drawing a doodle he made when he was 17 so he doesn't love talking about it which is fair i just looked up and no lie the drawing kind of looks like roger from american dad <laughs> I'll, I'll share it when we when we post this episode but yeah that was kind of my thought too right <laughs> like it's just it's interesting yeah makes you wonder if maybe yeah. um rogers based on the dover demon was kind of my 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 wonder hey it might be who knows um Who's to say? i personally think roger is more so based on like the grays like alien sightings the grays sort of thing yeah which i think i've already covered with our podcast but who is to say? It looks very alien esque, like yeah. stereotypical alien esque, minus the green my skin. Thing. I think that although it sounds very similar to Melon Heads, in my opinion, I think the Dover Demon is more alien ish, in my opinion. Yeah. Right? It's either a kid with a really big head or an alien. One of the two, right? So then it's not like he continues to have sightings or sees other things like we said or has any sort of special abilities when it comes to the Dover Demon. He just had this one event and every Halloween and every April social media or media in general will reach out to him and say, hey, do you want to talk about it again? And very often he says, I don't really, which is fair. Yeah, I feel like it would be hard to, if you were like trying to 
pursue something artistically and that was like the only thing that people cared about yeah that's the thing like he's like don't you want to hear about like what i'm doing today and they're like no tell us about the dover demon and he's like i was literally 17 and it was the 70s i would rather talk about anything else and they're like no this is all we want to talk about yeah, for real and be like, like that would cool. frustrate you. um so then jeff belange uh, who, again, is the host of the New England Legends podcast, says, once you've lived in a place for even a few years, you're probably going to see about probably every animal you're going to see in that town. So you probably know when something doesn't look like anything you've ever seen before, though, in response to, um, like, him talking about his interview with uh, our fine painting lad. So Rath then says, you and I have talked in the past about how I'm a fan of weird news. I subscribe to Fortean Times, which is basically a journal of bizarre, unexplainable things or happenings. But often journalists don't like these kind of stories or don't cover them very seriously, maybe out of fear of not being taken seriously themselves. What do you think about that in terms of how we talk about this stuff and how we regard stuff in our local history and journalism? So then Belanger says... I've looked at literally centuries of the way journalists have covered the unexplained from hauntings to monsters to everything else. There tends to be two ways that journalists go at these stories. The preferred way, and it still happens today, as and it happened a century ago, is that you're very matter-of-fact, the journalist says. People in Dover are buzzing about the story, and I've interviewed the relevant people, the witnesses, and this is what they say. You can take it or leave it, believe it or don't. I'm just reporting that this town is buzzing about something, and that this is what they've said. The other way journalists go after these stories is either tongue-in-cheek or to rid ridicule the people, saying, obviously you can't be real. Look at these silly folks. And then at that point, you've, you've, you're, bleh, you are completely editorializing. And as you know, that's not journalism. That's editorial. And that's true today. It depends on the venue and the outlet. It still gets covered that way. So basically, as journalists have talked to the people in the town of Dover over the years, the people in Dover will say, hey... Believe it or not, this is just what we say about what's here. You know, this is our cryptid. You know, kind of, it's just very matter of fact, right? It's a statement. It's like, the, the, these kids saw this thing. We believe that they saw something that night. Whether it is the Dover Demon or not is up to whoever, whatever, you know. And that's how most uh, journalists run it. But there are occasionally people who are like, these stupid people saw this thing that's obviously not a corrupted and we're going to talk about it today, which, uh, as Belanger said, is kind of a little rude, number one, <laughs> but also <laughs> it's kind of a, a, a like personal take on everything, too, which like if you're a journalist is probably not the approach you should take, especially when talking to people who like this is their town and they were kind of around when it happened and all these things, you know? Yeah. And I feel like when people, I don't know, like, I, even if you don't necessarily think it's true, I think there is something to it, the fact that it brings people together and it gives them, like, something as a community to kind of, like, something that makes their community special. Yeah, I think that's a part of it. It's, it's less of a, I feel like for the people of Dover, it's less of a cryptid and more of, like, a community bonding experience like a community bonding story like however you want to call it right yeah like oh i know the guy who originally saw this thing and oh i know their cousin and, their and blah 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 and their grandparents yeah like stuff like that right yeah so yeah that's kind of how i view it too which it makes sense like you know especially going off of like this guy who's the fi like a. Uh, I'm just going to look his name up here quick because it's further up in my notes. Um, but our fine I feel like being guy, a skeptic about these types of things just kind of takes the fun out of it, you know? Yeah. Like Bill Barlett, right? Like even him's like, he's like, I literally saw it, but I don't really want to talk about it today because it's not so much about him anymore. It's about the town, right? Yeah. It's almost like it's not really his story anymore. It's kind of moved past that point. Yeah, it's it's more of Dover's story, which um, I think is kind of a fair way to, you know, say that, right? Mm-hmm. All right. And so um, to just kind of cap off the rest of uh, this podcast uh, take. Yeah. So and we weren't there back in 1977. Bill was. um and then I'm still talking from the perspective of Belanger. So Belanger says that, uh, he says, I spoke to him and I find his story compelling enough 
that he doesn't know what he saw. And while it's so easy for people who are so skeptical to say, well, maybe it was an animal with mange. Maybe it was this. Maybe it was an owl. Come on. He lived in that town his whole life. Once you've lived in a place for even a few years, you've probably seen just about every animal you're probably going to see. You might see coyotes. You might see turkeys and deer or skunk. You know the animals and you know what they look like just from living there. And you also know when something doesn't look like anything you've seen before. And, uh, for sure. Yeah. And so that's kind of the end of Belanger's take. And that kind of caps off my notes. Um, I'm just going to credit also for what I mentioned in this podcast, Diego Lopez, who, um, was a part of the editing of this podcast and Aaron, Ra- Arun Rath, who was also one of the hosts on this podcast. So that ends my story, but I just want to add on to what Belanger was saying about like, you know, when you've not seen anything that you've seen before, like he now in his life, because he is a little bit older, probably, is at the point like we just discussed where he's like yeah you know this is the sta- this is the town of dover sto- story but also the people in dover are probably also kind of of that mindset too where th- where they're like hey if he saw something and he didn't know what it was it might not have been something he'd ever seen before anyways as to what that is mm-hmm. who's to say no one knows and i think the mystery is kind of like the fun part of it you know yeah right the unknown is the interesting part Mm -hmm. and and the part of it too where it wasn't just him either like there were a couple other kids his age who happened to be out at that time and see something that they didn't know what it was either so and yeah why would you want to take that from people anyways it would be like like i'm tell it's like me telling you about the not deer i saw i know what i saw looked like a deer but i also know that it wasn't a deer like you're not just gonna look me and be like well it was a deer because I say so. Because you're stupid. Yeah, because you're stupid and I know what I'm talking about, right? Like, if you live in a place where, like, where we live or where we grew up, where there is a lot of a certain type of animal or there's a lot of certain types of animals, you kind of get a sense of what's normal to see. And if you see something that's not really mm-hmm. anything like what you've seen before, then you you might have seen, you've probably seen something different, you know? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, and that's kind of the end of my story here. Well, how how are you feeling? Do you feel like the Dover Demon is real what do you think i think who's to say what they really saw that day yeah i'm kind of on the same page as what it sounds like literally everybody in dover feels like which is they probably saw something that was not normal to see around there but as for what it was no clue no one knows could be an alien and maybe no one ever will and maybe no one ever will it's a mystery um, but yeah, if you like today's episode, make sure to leave us a review on wherever you're li- listening to us because it's very much appreciated and I love it. Um, you can also check out our website, which is www.wheelofcrime.com. You can look us up on social media, which is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, all at Wheel of Crime. We have a Patreon if you want to donate to the show, which is at Wheel of Crime. And we have our email, which is wheelofcrime at gmail.com if you want to email us on there. And lastly, if you want to donate, nah, 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 not donate, unless, well, if you want to donate a listener story, you, <laughs> you can fill out our Google form. It's on all of our social media if you want to maybe submit your own story about the Dover Demon. Or maybe you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who lives in Dover. And knows about the Dover Demon. Or maybe you've seen an alien who kind of looks Or a like, cryptid. Yeah, or a cryptid that has a big head and small arms. You can send it into the podcast and you get featured on our next listener story. Yes, that's coming up at the end of August. So get your stories in here quick. Yep. Because that'll be fun and I can't wait. But yeah, that's it. That's all. And we'll see you next week for another new episode. Okay, bye. Bye.